this is Grandmaster Damien Lemos here for OnlineChessLessons.net and in this DVD we are going to study some classics. We'll see games of Capablanca, Alakine, Petrosian and the goal of this DVD is to show you guys that even in old games uh, we can learn and the main difference between these games and recent games is the fact theory was not that uh, developed and what we can learn from these games is um, the fact that um, following our gut can also pay off so we'll start in this introduction with Capablanca against Spielman so d4 d5 here Capablanca plays knight of 3 we know main move is c4 which is the queen's gambit and after knight of 3 we can play c4 later maybe this knight of 3 move is um, flexible but I feel we have to play c4 if we want to fight for the advantage we can also play other setups like bishop f4, e3, c3 the call system but we are not fighting for the center when we play c4 we are putting enough pressure so c4 the queen's gambit we know black played e6 already that means uh, he's gonna play the queen's gambit declined also known as uh, the orthodox he plays knight to d7 he can also play the main move here is knight of six but when he plays the orthodox sooner or later he plays knight bd7 so I don't see a big difference knight c3 knight f6 and bishop e5 well before playing e3 which is part of our plan e3 plus bishop d3 we play bishop e5 if we play this then our bishop on c1 is gonna be inside the pawn chain and we'll have to play b3 and bishop b2 and our bishop is still on a closed diagonal so bishop e5 and sometimes bishop f4 is better you're probably asking why not c takes d5 this is a move we see a lot um, little problem here is I mean c takes d5 is playable I don't want to play this too quickly because then black uh, fixes bishop c8 problem we know bishop c8 is usually a problem for black in a lot of defenses because it's lacking squares if we take on d5 quickly then he'll be able to develop this bishop so I prefer playing with the pawn on c4 if black decides to take on c4 we are gonna get that pawn back soon with e3 plus bishop takes so bishop e5 black plays bishop b4 and by the time this game was played this bishop b4 was not considered the best move nowadays we'll see a lot of games with this move this is in fact the Ragusin variation where black tries uh, creating counter play by means of h6, e5, sometimes knight e4 he's weakening his position a lot but he's getting an active play maybe c5 yeah he can also consider playing c5 the thing about playing bishop b4 is I don't think black wants to take on c3 because then he's giving away his strong bishop and since we are talking about an open position 
I don't mind uh, trading my knight for his bishop. What I think is, bishop b4, as I said, he wants to get some counterplay. Otherwise, he has to play bishop e7 and play as black plays in the orthodox. You know, he gets a solid position. So bishop b4. And here is where I want to uh, make a stop. Um, nowadays, we have a lot of information about this position. But let's see how Capablanca plays it. And he's just uh, playing by simple means, and he gets an advantage. First, he take on d5. Well, we said taking on d5 was not necessary. We can also play e3. But I guess if we play e3, black plays c5. After all, that is what uh, he wanted to play. So we make it simple. We take on d5. We trade a couple of pieces off. And then we play queen a4. First, we are pinning the knight on d7. That makes bishop takes f6 uh, a nice move. I mean, he'll have to take with the queen on f6. And of course, we also attacked bishop on b4. Suddenly, we have a couple of threats. So after queen a4, he decides uh, to take on c3, and I think taking on c3 is a mistake, as we pointed out before, getting the bishop pair gives us the advantage. We have an open position. If black wanted to play an active position, he should play something like c5. I think this is together with a5, uh, probably the only move, something like queen e7 is too passive, and as we know, the queen is kind of overloaded here. This works. Knight takes f6 is not possible, queen takes, runs into queen takes. Okay, maybe bishop takes c3. And as you can see here, um, Black didn't lose his bishop pair, and he's got a solid position. Well, maybe queen e7 is a better try. I don't like the fact that queen is overloaded. So that is why I suggest c5 here. This is making things too easy for us. And the thing is, sometimes Black takes on c3 and then he doubles up our pawns. Here we don't have a pawn on c4. That means our pawn structure is not weak at all. And the other thing is, when we have the bishop pair, we want to open that position. So even if he plays c5, uh, we don't mind, because that is helping us, actually. He, he plays c5 anyway. I agree, because he has to create some counterplay. I like bishop d3. This is the best diagonal by far. We have to exploit our two bishops. And he plays c4. Well, I think this is... Okay, on one hand, Black wants to close that position a bit, because he has the knight pair. On the other hand, I feel he's close in the center, therefore he won't have much counterplay. If I were black, I would consider something like moving my queen. Uh, you know, getting out of this diagonal, maybe queen e8. 
you'll find this move in the analysis in the PHN and maybe black can continue with something like 94 that uh, queen e8 makes a lot of sense or queen c7 maybe okay I think he didn't play this in view of bishop f4 well that makes queen e8 even easier to find uh, c4 I think it's a mistake from that positional point of view then the center is closed and he won't be able to create counterplay what is more after c4 one day we'll play e4 and that c4 pawn is gonna be even uh, weaker so here he plays queen e7 I still think we have to play something like queen e8 or rook e8 here we are still pinning that knight okay castling is natural and another mistake by black I'm not saying c4 and a6 are big mistakes I'm just saying uh, they are weak from a uh, depositional point of view because apart from being passive moves black is placing black is placing every single pawn on light squares that makes bishop c8 a terrible one would be much better if he places his pawns on d6 c5 b6 a7 I know it's tough but I don't think he wins much and even if he plays b5 one day we'll play a4 and we keep on opening the queen side so here black he should play something like queen e6 again getting out of the e5 e7 diagonal so here h6 I like this move one day we'll play e4 remember our plan is to open that position as much as we can and now he plays queen e6 uh, black finds the right move but uh, he wasted the tempo playing a6 and we are playing the same position with an extra powerful move which is rook e1 if he played b5 which is the logical follow-up here I think his position is too weak suddenly our queen can also be annoying on c7 so yeah queen e6 makes much more sense and once he plays queen e6 I guess we're probably thinking about knight to e4 that is uh, probably a uh, black's next move therefore we have to play against it I like this move stopping knight e4 and why not maybe preparing f3 plus e4 black plays b5 maybe b5 is not the best move but black has to follow a plan remember it is better to play a bad plan rather than playing with no no plan at all so he has to also play something like bishop b7 and finish his development so queen a5 and then he plays knight e4 well um, let's try to understand why Spielman played knight e4 I don't like the move much but if he played bishop b7 then we just play f3 and I don't see any way to to stop e4 and once we play e4 we'll continue advancing and we have a powerful attack there's nothing black can do to stop this in some variations our bishop has a way back home to f2 
So that is why black plays knight e4. Despite moving the same piece twice in the opening, he is, he's winning space and uh, he's making our f3 e4 uh, more difficult. Of course we take with the knight, we can't afford losing bishop c2 at this point. So d takes e4 and okay here we have to make sure we open the entire position. I don't think we can play f3 yet, that opens our king too much. But we also have targets on the queen side and most important we have a development advantage. Therefore this move is too easy and black keeps on moving pieces twice in the middle game. This queen d5 despite being active the queen is too overloaded here. I prefer playing something like rook b8. I know the pressure continues after something like rook b1 but maybe here he can play queen d5. Now it's different as as we'll see in the game. Uh, queen d5 here gives us an extra possibility. So okay let's uh, think for a while here after queen d5. First move we can consider is of course moving our bishop to f4 or h4, let us say this move, because here we stop rook b8. I think here black finds enough tempos to protect his position. Let us say we play this, bishop c6, somehow he protects, uh, he manages to build up a fortress there. I still think we are better, but it's pretty tough to to crack that a6 b5 fortress so usually when we have a situation like this we also have to consider in between moves and that is why a queen d5 is a mistake as we said rook b8 was better Capablanca takes on b5 and this is also a matter of initiative, of course. We are going to create a passer. And what I like about this variation is the fact it is a forced one. As we always tell, and uh, we'll find this concept in all the DVDs, we have each time you have a forced variation, like here black is going to play only moves, that means we are probably uh, in the right way because if your opponent has a lot of variations, a lot of options well um, he probably has an advantage on the other hand if he's playing only moves well he, he's probably losing like here he can just play rook b8 if rook a7 and this is what uh, Capablanca saw beforehand, we have b6. Attacking the queen and we are about to promote. So after b takes a7, well I don't see any playable move. If queen takes, rook takes, knight b6. The resulting endgame is one for us. Apart from the extra pawn we have two targets so maybe black has to play bishop b7 and okay we have uh, two pieces for the rook is black however the passer, the passer on a7 plus the extra pawns should be deciding this game 
So he plays rook b8, and then we have the a7, a8 threat, and we'll eventually get our piece back. So let's see how in two or three moves we basically get a winning position. When we see this position after a4, we know we have an advantage, but it is tough to tell we have a winning advantage in a couple of moves. And we have a big difference between queen d5 and rook b8. So pawn takes, okay, queen takes. Maybe black didn't see this rook a7, b6 variation. So here he plays rook b5. I like the fact he's trying an aggressive move because if he plays the passive queen takes then he's defendless. Rook a8 is probably the only move and instead of taking on a8 we can just play this and we also win. See that uh, black's extra material doesn't count unless his pieces are developed. Rook f8 is not doing much, bishop c8 is not doing much, so his extra pieces is not counting at all. Rook b5. I like queen c7 just in case, protecting the king side as well. Knight b6. So black is trying to get some counterplay, maybe some sacrifice. And when we have a position like this, I'm used to playing the safe move. We probably have a lot of ways of winning this, but if I can stop any counterplay, better. So far I don't see any threats. I just want to make sure I trade his active pieces, therefore I like rook b1. He has to take um, rook c8 is it's not really a threat because that rook has to stay on the first rank, so something like this would work. Maybe rook takes b5 as well. Yeah, there's no way to stop all the threats here. Um, so rook takes b1, rook takes f5, and as I was saying before, I don't want to allow any counterplay. I'll just play the safe bishop f3, and he has to resign here. Black plays an extra move, and after pawn takes, he resigns. This is too simple. If queen takes, we are more than happy to trade queens. If rook takes, uh, he's not able to create any counterplay. I mean, before we promote. So, he resigns. Um, I think this is, after queen d5, the game was forced, I mean, more or less, black can't improve much after a takes b5. So if he played something like rook b8, as I said, we have an advantage, but maybe he'll manage to create a fortress or maybe rook b6, rook e6. I mean, we are playing a different game here. We still have the advantage of, as white, but um, this game uh, teaches us that sometimes uh, 
a little difference like queen d5 and rook b8 is in fact a big, a big one. So I hope you enjoyed this analysis. Also I like the way Capablanca played this opening in a, in a simple way he got an advantage against the Ragusin which is one of the main lines nowadays. So again I hope this was useful and we'll continue analyzing in the next videos. Thank you. Hi, this is Grandmaster Damien Lemos. First of all I hope you enjoyed um, this video. If you would like to receive more free chess videos from us, you can just click the subscribe button below. I would also highly recommend signing up for my free mail course, The 10 Grandmaster Secrets to Dominate Chess. During this exclusive course from OnlineChessLessons.net, I'll share with you my own Grandmaster shortcuts to effective attacking, defending and growth hacks to improving your chess without uh, complicated books or memorization. So sign up by clicking the sidebar on the right and I know you won't be disappointed. Once more this is Damien uh, for OnlineChessLessons.net and I'll see you uh, in my videos. Thank you.